The following tutorial will cover benign liver masses, and it's not meant to be comprehensive, but we're going to go through three of the more common benign liver lesions that you may encounter in your patient. The first lesion that I'm going to talk about is the liver hemangioma. Now, these come in several varieties. The classic uh, hemangioma is known as the cavernous hemangioma. And you're going to think of a cavernous hemangioma when you see a mass in the liver. On the T2-weighted images, the mass will be T2 hyperintense. When you give contrast, there's going to be this peripheral discontinuous nodular enhancement. It's going to look like little puddles of enhancement along the periphery of the lesion. And when you image on the different phases, that nodular enhancing components will uh, fill in in a centripetal fashion. And as you enhance from the arterial to the portal venous to the equilibrium and all other phases, the amount of enhancement within it will follow the degree of enhancement within the blood pool at the time of imaging. Next up, we have uh, what we call flash filling hemangiomas. Sometimes these are also referred to as capillary hemangiomas. And like cavernous hemangiomas, these will also be T2 hyperintense. And when you give contrast, they'll enhance on the arterial phase imaging and on the remaining phases will follow the blood pool. But these will be a more homogeneous enhancement, not that peripheral discontinuous enhancement that comes in. And these often end up uh, being smaller lesions, typically less than two centimeters in size. On the other hand, we have this entity known as giant hemangiomas. We call them giant when they're typically more than five centimeters, though there are some variable definitions of that within the literature. Now generally the imaging features of a giant hemangioma will be very similar to the cavernous hemangioma in that you're going to see a, you know, a large mass in this instance with peripheral discontinuous nodular-like enhancement that fills in, that follows the blood pool. But one of the features that I would say is more often seen with giant hemangiomas, but which can be seen with cavernous hemangiomas, is this area of cystic degeneration, particularly along the central portion of the lesion um, we have areas of liquefaction that are uh, have a higher T2 signal than the hemangioma itself and that don't quite enhance uh, on the post-contrast imaging. So that's something you can look out for these giant hemangiomas. Now, what do you really need to know about hemangiomas? Well, you need to know that they're very common and that's really the most common benign liver tumor that we end up seeing. It's more often seen in females but can be seen in males. Quite often single but you can see them multiple on, uh, on occasion so don't be alarmed at that. And almost always these are incidental findings. This is not something that you need to be worried about. Complications are extremely rare if they occur at all. Potentially if a hemangioma is large and in a particular location, if it's pedunculated for example, it can cause some degree of mass effect upon adjacent organs, so that's something to look out for. There's this entity of Kasebeck Merritt syndrome. We have a large hemangioma, particularly in pediatric patients, that consumes platelets and can cause a coagulopathy. Really rare. And then even rarer is a bleeding causing hemoperitoneum. So really uncommon complications for the most part. Really don't need to be worried about hemangiomas when you encounter these lesions. Another uh, relatively common lesion, though much less often seen in hemangioma, is focal nodular hyperplasia. Imaging features differ uh, when compared to hemangioma in that FNHs will be pretty much iso-intense when you compare it to the liver parenchyma on the T1 and T2 weighted images to the point where if you just use the non-contrast sequences it may be very difficult to identify this lesion when you're going through a case initially. Now on occasion, and it's been quoted from 30% to 60% in the literature, may end up seeing a central scar and that scar region uh, is T2 hyperintense, and that's sort of different from the remainder of the parenchyma. So you may end up seeing that in a subset of patients, something to look out for in patients with focal nodular hyperplasia. Now when you give contrast in the arterial phase, FNHs will demonstrate homogeneous arterial hyperenhancement. And when you look at it on the portal venous and equilibrium phases, these will be relatively iso-intense to the liver. So the best sequence to pick up FNHs really is going to be that arterial phase where it will light up. And one of the features that you may end up seeing, particularly in patients who end up having that central scar, is that region of scarring, particularly on the more delayed phase images like the equilibrium phase, may end up enhancing. So look out for that if you end up seeing that central scar.
Now we often are more confident in diagnosing these FNHs when we use agents with partial hepatobiliary excretion such as Uvist. When you give that contrast agent and you wait 20 minutes, classic FNHs will be hyper intense on this sequence. They can sometimes be iso intense, but really classically hyper intense, and it's due to the presence of um, certain uh, organic ion peptide channels that allow contrast agent to come into the solution but not excrete it outwards. And what do you need to know about FNH as well? This is really very, very commonly seen in females more than males. So you're really going to encounter these in female patients and young female patients, those within the third or fourth decades of life. Like hemangiomas, FNHs are often picked up in an incidental manner. They're often solitary, so you're not going to really encounter too many patients with multiple FNHs, though it can occur. And also, like hemangiomas, complications of FNHs really are rare, and for practical purposes, you can really say there are no real complications. You don't really need to be worried about it. You have an FNH. Now, there is some literature to suggest that you know, FNHs could grow in the setting of patients using oral contraceptive pills and uh, in pregnancy, though the risk associated with that growth is really uncertain. And so, in some instances, providers may choose to monitor a patient with FNHs as there may be some degree of uh, growth that can occur in particular settings, but for the most part, you know, you don't need to be too worried about uh, that if you have a patient uh, with an FNH. And finally, the third benign liver mass I'm going to cover is the liver adenoma. Now, the imaging appearance of this um, on all the sequences will generally be more variable than what we've seen in the past two cases. You know, the T1 and T2 non-contrast is going to be variable. On T1 weighted images, it may be hyper intense uh, in settings where you have a little bit of hemorrhage associated with adenomas, which is something you can see. And on uh, T2 weighted images, it may be uh, hyper intense to a um, degree that is more than what you would see with FNHs. So with FNHs, you hardly see it on the T2 weighted images. Well, adenoma, you certainly have a chance at seeing it based on its T2 intense signal. Uncommonly, you can see something called the atoll sign, which is a rim of T2 hyperintense signals surrounding the lesion. It's thought to be secondary to dilated sinusoids uh, adjacent to the mass itself. So that's something you can look out for that may be helpful in, in patients who you're suspecting have an adenoma. When you give contrast in your arterial phase, there will be hyperenhancement, but I would say that the degree of hyperenhancement is generally more heterogeneous than you see in FNHs. FNHs tends to be a little bit more homogeneous, so this one is a little bit more heterogeneous, so that may be a clue that you're dealing with an adenoma. And then its appearance on portal venous nuclear phase images tends to be more variable. It can become iso-intense, but generally it uh, doesn't quite become completely iso-intense, so that may be another clue to defer it from an FNH. On the hepatobiliary phase, when you use something like EOVIST, it is classically hypo-intense, but it's good to know in the back of your mind that even that appearance can be variable. So you may encounter patients with adenomas that have iso or are slightly hyper-intense, and so overall you really have to look at the whole picture, and, and oftentimes you may need to do a biopsy to diagnose this. Now adenomas like FNHs will be more often seen in females of childbearing age, so really the same general demographics as patients with focal nodular hyperplasia. There's a very strong association with oral contraceptive pills. They can grow in pregnancy. Uh, but there's also um, some association between developing adenomas and the use of anabolic steroids, as well as in patients who have glycogen storage disease. And often, you know, while adenomas can be seen with, in females with oral contraceptive pills who are pregnant, it can also be seen with males if they have risk factors such as glycogen storage disease or use of steroids for whatever reason. And unlike hemangiomas and FNHs, adenomas do have some complications that one needs to be aware of. And the most uh, important complication that we encounter is really bleeding. So these can bleed and cause hemoperitoneum. And uncommonly, they can also undergo malignant transformation to HCC. But that is, uh, again, very uncommon. A couple of last words on adenomas before we wrap up. Firstly, that uh, it's important to remember that there are actually different subtypes of adenomas that can be seen with slightly different imaging appearances, and certain subtypes may actually contain intralesional lipids. So if you see a fat-containing mass in a patient who's female oral contraceptive pills, you really do want to think of the possibility that it represents a, a liver adenoma. And uh, you can have multiple adenomas, and particularly if it's greater than 10, it's known as adenomatosis. So with that, I thank you for your attention.